The following video is part of my DMVPN from Basics to Scalable Networks webinar. To learn more about my webinars, please visit my website. But let's start with phase one. As I said, on the spoke routers you have point-to-point -point GRE tunnels, on the hub router you have multi-point tunnel, and you could use default routing on spokes or anything else you like as long as the hub is the next hop. Data traffic flows only through the hub. So whatever the spokes do, however they want to exchange traffic, all the traffic between spokes goes through the hub. And multicasts are exchanged only between the hub and the spokes. Routing updates routing protocol hellos, everything flows only between the hub and the spokes. There is no spoke-to-spoke -spoke multicast. Hub is acting also as NHRP next hop server, so the spokes register with the hub, and so the hub knows how to reach each individual spoke. You can use almost any routing protocol with DMVTM phase one. The only requirement is that next hop must always be the hub router. So even a spoke route, when seen on another spoke, has to point to the hub. What does it mean? For OSPF, you have to configure points to multi-point network type. For EIGRP, the only thing you might need to do is to disable split horizon. And for eBGP, you have to use NextHop self. You'll see later on how exactly these things are configured. iBGP, by the way, does not work with DMVPN phase one, at least not well. Let's go into the configuration details now. As I said, on spokes, we have point-to-point -point GRE tunnels which means that you have usually a loopback interface, a LAN interface, the internet interface, and then you create a tunnel interface. Because it's a point-to-point -point tunnel, you have to specify tunnel source and tunnel destination. Don't use an IP address for tunnel source. Use an interface. There have been a few bugs in iOS where if you would use tunnel source and IP address, you might have a problem. Also, if you're using an ISP that changes your IP address over time, it doesn't make sense to specify the IP address in the tunnel source. It's almost mandatory to specify the bandwidth. You need it for QoS, you need it for EIGRP, and it's impossible to, for the router to figure out what the bandwidth should be. You have to specify it. You also have to set the IPMTU and IPTCP adjust MSS. Because of the GRE and IPSec headers, you cannot put a whole 1500 byte IP packet into a DMVPN tunnel. And if you start sending oversized packets into the tunnel, the router has to fragment either GRE or IPsec packets, and then the receiving router has huge problems because it cannot fast or self switch those packets anymore. It has to go back to process switching. So to avoid the performance problems, set the MTU on the tunnel interface, and to work around those people that misconfigure firewalls so that path MTU discovery doesn't work anymore, set IPTCP adjust MSS. Uh, in the follow-up reading document that I'll send you, uh, there's a table specifying what exactly the maximum MTU is for particular combinations of IPsec parameters. 1400 is safe. 
So Cisco is recommending in some documents to use 1400 just to be on the safe side. And IPTCP adjust MSS has to be 40 bytes less than the MTU. In phase one DMVPN, the tunnel key parameter is optional. So you don't have to use it. To get more information about my webinars, to register for an online session or buy a recording, please visit my website.